Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Monlock and I am a practicing physician in women's and men's health and wellness and also the author of Blossoming, which is a book written about the adolescent female and the trials and tribulations of being a teenager and going through the hormone swings from beginning to hopefully regularity. When I was in high school, my original intent was to be a foreign language specialist. And I was preparing for giving a speech to my senior class at commencement. And one of the teachers came behind me to read my speech. And as I was covering my speech up to say, you'll hear this at graduation, he said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I'm going to be a foreign language specialist. And he started laughing and I said, okay, what do you think I'm going to be? He said, you're going to be a doctor. And I thought, wow, that's a hoot. So I went home, told my dad that story. And he sat back in his chair and he crossed his arms and he goes, why not? I've been in practice for over 30 years. When I started in practice, I started as traditional OBGYN, thinking that that was going to be where I would begin and end my career, would be delivering babies, doing surgery, helping women. What I found in my journey through medicine is that helping patients is not always about being in a procedure room or in an operating room. The best way to help patients is to help them stay as healthy and as well as they can be. So what my practice became as I aged with my patients is that we wanted less of the operating room, we wanted less procedures, we wanted less medication, we wanted more ability to be, empower our own health. We wanted to take charge of our own health and not be at the whim of what our, our bodies or what our doctors were telling us was gonna happen. The changes that happened to me when I was going, therefore, through perimenopause and menopause, as I saw my daughters mirroring a lot of the things that I went through in perimenopause, they were going through in adolescence. So that whole aha moment was something that prompted me to step back and go, wait a minute, there's, I'm not the only one that this is happening to. This has to be happening to other moms and other daughters. So that prompted my journey into adolescent women's health, and it also spurred my continued interest in not only women's health, but menopausal health. So, so we're still working on that bidding war. Perfect. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. By yes. the time we recheck levels, we may have an even yeah. better option for you. Perfect. Which be even better. Yeah. <laughs> Many times when a patient comes in and we do initial blood work, initial hormone levels, what we'll find is their baseline. And a baseline is always a good place to start. It gives everybody a, you know, kind of that ground um, that, that everything is gonna begin from. Realize that as we mature and as a teenager goes through the beginnings of her menstrual career, her cycles are gonna be irregular. They're gonna to continue to change. They're gonna to continue to morph and either become more regular or she may have some kickstarts along the road that may change things. And one of the biggest kickstarts that we may see is that if there's irregularity in her female cycles, the male hormone may become a more dominant option. And with more male hormone comes the dreaded acne. I'd like to propose that the hormone swings that go on with the adolescent teen are something that medicine has ignored, but we should start to pay attention to. And it's as simple as offering the teenager and her mom the option of coming to the gynecologist, telling their story. The gynecologist is interested because they actually see women of all ages with these same questions and concerns. I wanted to write books, and in particular, start the series of five books that I want to write because the work that I'm doing with my patients, I was continually frustrated that 
This is information that needs to not get only to my patients, but needs to get into the hands of every woman in this country. How can I accomplish that? I'm a physician in Waukesha, Wisconsin, a suburb of Milwaukee. Wow, where is that information really going to be able to get out to the masses? So the medical profession is very good at taking care of the patients we have in front of us, but when the message is a broader message, how do we get that message out, especially if that message is not necessarily going to benefit a bottom line of a hospital system. So Blossoming is the first book in a series of five books that I'm planning on writing. And they're books about how I practice. So Blossoming is a book about the adolescent female and the journey that she makes with starting puberty and getting to a young adult age of age 20. A lot of hormone change happens during that time and medicine basically ignores the adolescent female. The adolescent female is told it's just hormones, it's just PMS, go to your room, you're a drama queen, you'll get over it, and yet they're going through the same hormone swings that a woman in her perimenopause in her 40s goes through. When I hit perimenopause and realized with my own challenges with hormone swing that this may be not all that women's health is all about, the next challenge was personally getting myself through my perimenopause. I had physical challenges that challenged me. I had teenage daughters that were challenging me. And I had to balance all of that with home life with my husband working full time with three girls active in sports and my profession. So it was very challenging at that point and the operating room became less and less of an option as I was looking for non-surgical resolutions not only for myself but for my patients. Even though there are many female physicians, a female physician in a field that is surgical but yet it's about women it was still a very male dominated field and a lot of women physicians feel that their way to succeed is to be as male like and fit the model of what has been out there before so the idea of a caring listening female physician when I started in practice was considered kind of a novelty what the model of medicine has done as it has evolved is that medicine, I feel, is no longer about the patient. Medicine is about the system. Medicine is about the business of medicine, and we've lost the focus that medicine should be about the patient.